Thanks for watching Jake3D. Today I'm gonna unbox dual GTX 1080s and an SLI bridge. Enjoy. I didn't just get one, I got two. And an SLI bridge, cause I'm Don Wong. No, no, wait, that's the, uh, that's the CNET guy. I'm Jake3D. We'll see if that gag makes it into the edit. I got this SLI bridge on Amazon because it was the right spacing for my motherboard, but it's also, it was cheaper than the Nvidia version. I could swear that I paid for the brand new one rather than the used one but I, I, it was a bit of a discount compared to the uh, NVIDIA one, so I may have gotten the used one, I'm not sure, but it obviously has been open before. Uh, the other reason I got this SLI bridge is because it is RGB. So even though these are Founders Edition cards, this is an NVIDIA uh, SLI bridge. It does have four positions on the switch here. They're not actually marked, but uh, the power comes through the dual SLI fingers here from the two cards and you got um, red, green, blue, and white. And then if you stick it in between two spots, you can shut it off completely. The only reason I was able to get the 1080s is because I put up on Craigslist to work on people's car for uh, electronics. And it took a long time to come through, but it, the one guy I, just helped him fix his car and he gave it to me straight out. The other guy, I ended up helping him out and then maybe three months later, he was able to come through with the 1080 and a little bit of cash for him as well, but it allowed me to get a dual 1080 setup. So it just goes to show if you are persistent enough and you put yourself out there, there is other ways to get it. So, you know, it's, it's something that I've used that for uh, several things for this build, is, you know, help people out with what they need help with, and they can help you out with what you need help with. You can still see it. Oh. Gorge. Stay, microphone. I can use that for the um, thumbnail. Welcome to GeForce Gaming. Support guide, quick start guide, a badge that you can go ahead and put on your case. I like to put those on little blank fridge magnets from the hobby store or the craft store. Um, makes it easier to transfer between cases as well as put it a lot of other places. Just kind of a personal preference thing. Sometimes they got CDs and that kind of stuff. Normally I toss those cause you always want to download the drivers. That way you can get the latest drivers or a compatibility driver if you have a particular program application game that does not work with the latest driver properly. Reserve precautions for handling electrostatic sensitive devices. That's your case. Ground yourself. I've never blown up a graphics card, but I have seen it happen. It actually ripped right through the static shielding bag. First time I picked one of these up, I was very surprised. And I still kind of am surprised with the uh, the sheer weight of these cards, because you got a large amount of aluminum or brass right here for the heat sink. And it is your standard blower style for all your reference cards in through here, out through the back. There's a little bit of ventilation on the front as well. And there is three holes on the front there. Not sure what those are for, but if I were to guess, it would be to install some sort of bracket so that when you sit it in your system like this, um, it tends to sag a little bit. If you put a bracket and a support bar here, it'll hold it up, keep it from bending down. Does come with 
a bat plate on here. Feels like metal. I'll have to double check. And let's peel this off. Ah, no cool sound. Oh well. And it does have a single power input here, eight pin PCI Express power input. So that means it's, it's much easier to power this with my power supply. Um, I do have one that's beefy enough to, be definitely beefy enough for it. So that's actually really nice being able to handle overclocking with just a single power, um, just a single eight pin power connector. And as far as overclocking it goes, tests have shown for the majority, obviously not every everything's the same, but for the majority, it, these Founders cards overclock very similar to uh, designs with more power phases on it. The biggest difference is gonna be with the sound, where these this style of fan here is much louder uh, to keep it at the same temperature. But, you know, that's gonna be fine for me. I want to water cool these eventually, but that's definitely a little bit further in the future because unless somebody wants to uh, trade or sell me some water cooling supplies, uh, that will have to wait for a while. The SLI bridge goes right on these SLI fingers here. You can use a single wide bridge and that will give you SLI between the cards. When doing SLI, you have three options. Uh, you can use the flexible bridge. I did get one with the motherboard. See the card linked, see the video linked with the little I card right there. You do have a hard bridge, uh, which will use a single connection. And you have the high bandwidth bridge, which is what I got right here. It has two connections on each side so that it does a much higher bandwidth. So you get more stability um, and better frame rates, depending on the situation. In some situations, you're not gonna have a single bit of difference. In other situations, you are gonna have um, up to 10% difference, I believe is what uh, people have been seeing. So it goes on here for the first card. And the second card will go right there, leaving a one width base, a one slot width in the middle there, which makes it so that your second card, your, your top card is not starved for air. If you have the shorter SLI bridge, a zero slot spacing is what NVIDIA calls it for the uh, hard, hard bridge. Other manufacturers are gonna call it a little bit different spacing because if you look at it from this way, your slot here, and you got one, two, and the third one is where it is. So you could call this three, you can call this a single in between, and that's what NVIDIA chooses to call it as a single card spacing. We'll go on right there. The other ones will go pretty much right up against it and give you very minimal space in between them, so. That was a feature that I liked about this level of work. Infinite power. One thing I'm excited to do with these graphics cards is do a lot of testing, do some uh, benchmarking with these cards. When you ever you do an SLI setup, you do make sacrifices. So in some games, you are gonna see that with one card, you're gonna get frame rates, um, say, you know, 60 frames, where with two cards, you're gonna get, say, um, 70, 80, 90 frames per second. Now, even with that, you know, two cards, hey, looks a lot better. But in, in other cases, you'll see with one card, you get between 55 and 65 frames, and it's very consistent. With two cards, you get between 60 and 90, with minimums dropping even below that sometimes as well, but you get a lot of frame stutter or frame jitter or frame tearing, which is basically technical terms for saying you get a lot of weird 
stuff happening with two cards that you don't get with one card. So it may not run as fast with one card, but you're gonna get a better experience because less issues, less jerkiness, all that kind of stuff. Another thing that can happen with some games is with one card, you get 60, and with two cards, you end up getting uh, 50 or 40. And that, that's a rare occurrence, especially with DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 especially. You're not gonna see that very much, but it does happen, especially with new releases and, and new updates, that kind of thing does happen still. You, you don't see that anywhere near as much today as you did before, because with the GTX 900 series and before, you were able to do three and four cards in SLI. Now you're only able up to do up to two cards. Uh, there are some special circumstances where that isn't 100% true, but for the most part, you're only able to do two cards in SLI. So that that's another reason not to go with too many extra cards, but another sacrifice you make with doing SLI. And that's one of the things I wanna test out. Another thing that I'm really excited for is games. There's a lot of things that I can't do on my current system, a lot of games that I can't play on my current system, just because it, it will not physically load the games or the games are under 20 frames, under 20 FPS. And it just is an, an outright unplayable experience. And even if the game will even load. Something else that I used to be big into is graphics, 3D graphics, 3D rendering, and 3D modeling. So that's something that I've, I've always loved to do. Um, even in my picture, my my channel picture, it, it has some things that I've made myself that took just forever to, to put together because of the sheer graphics horsepower needed to drive that um, engine whereas the computers I've had previously just really didn't cut it. So this is gonna help out a ton when it comes to rendering and modeling and all that kind of stuff. And that, that's something that I'm really excited about. So there's the games, there's the testing of the cards, there's the 3D graphics, the 3D rendering, just the, the modeling and um, computer physics simulations. That's another thing is, is doing um I believe it's called ansys and Ans yeah ansys it is a program that allows you to do fluid dynamic testing of a system so you can you know test an engine or an airflow or an airframe physically on the computer or um digitally on the computer so you can check to see how well it's going to work theoretically and uh some programs like autodesk inventor have stress built into it stress testing built into it where I can, I have done it a couple times on this computer, but it just was horribly, horribly slow. And I'm very excited to, to see how well, how much improvement I can get out of that. So we'll do some cleanup on this computer, do some testing on this one, and do some testing on the computer I'm building for here. So that's, that I am very excited to see. <laughs> hey, if you're excited to see that, go ahead and leave a like on this video. So that, that, that is something that I am very excited to try out, something I'm very excited to see. Um, I, I have left a link in the description below here for these cards, as well as the high bandwidth uh, RGBW bridge for from EVGA. And uh, I'll even leave a link to the GTX 1070, because that card is a much better as far as cost to performance card. So I'll go ahead and leave that in the description. And hey, if you're excited to see these games or these, these benchmarking or some more 3D modeling, go ahead and leave a like on this video. Also leave a comment down below. What is your favorite graphics program? What's your favorite game uh, to, to run on a system like this? Let me know, would, would you have chosen the, the 1070? Go ahead and leave that down in the comments, let me know. As well, you know, I, I wanna thank you very much for watching Jake3D and I will see you in the next one.